I'm going to have a disassembly video for the 1873 Springfield Trapdoor Rifle. Now it is not that complicated, but there are several things you could do wrong and damage the gun seriously, which people do do. So, and this disassembly is good for all the 50 caliber models, uh, the 1868s, 70s, um, the only two in the trapdoor family, the only two types of guns that are going to be different than this is the uh, Allen conversions because you need a special screwdriver. I'm not going to do that right at the moment. And the 1888 with the ramrod bayonet because the mechanism that holds the bayonet is permanently attached to the barrel. And that's the only uh, difference between this. But basically all your Springfield trapdoors are going to disassemble the same way and you should follow the procedure. The only difference is on the early models, the very, very first few made, which probably don't have, or the 50s, is the hammer has only two positions. Where in the 45-70s, it has three. It has this click, first click. The second click is safe, load, unload. On the 50s, it's at rest. Second, first click is safe, second click is fire. On a 4570, third click is fire. So what you want to do is get on a 4570, two clicks, you're in safe. Check the weapon, make sure it is unloaded. Now I'm going to have the camera back because this stuff is pretty self-explanatory, this first stage. After you check the weapon, remove the ramrod if one is present. Get it out. There's little, they call called uh, band springs in there. You depress them down and then slide off the front band and the second band back here by the sight. Now some of these might be stiff. I have one that it's, it's almost impossible to press that thing down and get the uh, band off. The newer the gun or the nicer condition the gun is, the, the tighter the fit is. These guns were made well and were fitted together very tightly. They were not wartime production. They were made high quality and their, the locks fit in the wood very, very tight. And there's another point where you can damage this. Now this one's worn and used and, and the lock's been splintered. When removing the lock or the trigger guard, I'm not going to pull the trigger guard out because it's unnecessary and there's a good possibility you could split or chip the wood if you got a real nice stop. So we're going to skip over this. Next step is the lock. Now the lock, what we're going to do is there's a way to take this apart. And another this pin. Do not ever drive this pin out unless you have the action out of the stop. Because the pin does protrude below the wood, and if you try to remove the breech bolt by drifting the pin out, you're going to bust the stock. And when we get to the breech bolt, you should have your gunsmith screwdriver, so you shouldn't be taking the gun apart without it. You're going to need a soft face mallet next, and we're going to need some punches, either a quarter inch or three sixteenths in diameter. And you're going to need this to get the breech bolt out. All right, now we're going to zoom in and get some detail on what we're going to do next. Okay, again, like I said, these locks are fitted into the wood pretty tight on a pristine example. This one isn't, isn't that tight because this gun's a bit on the warm side. Flip the rifle over and you got your two screws here that are going to hold your uh, lock in. What you do is you loosen these up a bit back them out a little bit, say like where they stick up a quarter inch or so, but don't take them all the way out. You still want them screwed into the plate. And you kind of turn it equal because then we're going to take a rubber mallet and we're going to tap on it. And what this is going to do is this is going to help press the lock plate out. Also, when you are reassembling this, you want to get it in, get it started, and then turn them with equal amounts of pressure. See this one come 
comes right on out. Then once I back these screws out, this lock plate will drop off because the wood's a little chipped. Some of them, it's real tight, and you'll have to back it off a little, tap it, back it off equal amounts, tap it out, and you'll get the lock plate off. They're fitted super, super tight in a pristine example. And if, you're not, if you have a pristine example, you don't want to damage it. I have one that somebody chipped and splintered the wood. And you can see it's chipped and splintered around this. See, this is, these aren't backing up, so that lock plate's falling out. And you just unscrew it. You know, you might have to tap it more than once. And then you have your lock plate and hammer off. You can take the screws out if you want or leave them in there. The next screw is the tang screw. And you loosen the tang screw. And remove it. Ah, stop coming apart on me. Then you free the action from the stock. The stock has been spliced when I shot it today. Okay. Now you have the action free from the stock. There's a pin, and now you can see where that pin has a tail that goes down below the wood. And what happens is when you try to drive this pin out with the stock still attached, it'll split and break the stock. So you don't want that. So with the breech mechanism loose, we'll get back to this in a second. So you got your trigger guard. I'm not going to pull it off. You can take these wood screws out and try to pull that off, but like I said, if they're fitted tight, it might be difficult unless you have to clean it or there's a reason you have to remove it. I'd leave it alone. Um, now we're going to take our quarter inch punch and from the right side, you see that big thing there, we're going to try to drift out this pin. that's moving. Now you can put this over the edge of the table so or in a vise or whatever you like but make sure it's free and clear and then you just drive it out. Get it started. You see where that that's coming out. Now some of these may be loose, some of these may be tight. What's holding it in, the tight, the pressure, is the uh, ejector spring. So you can drift this out a little at a time, check it, just gently tap it. Because reassembling the ejector spring and plunger can be difficult. Actually, you don't, if you get it back out far enough, you can wiggle it there. And then the bolt will come loose. But the ejector and the spring and plunger are still in there. Now, the thing is, this is under pressure, and you, it's a weird, you gotta like hold it down and push it back. It's real hard to get out. And unless you have a punch, basically go through and apply pressure, it's going to be difficult to get out. So you can stop there, or I'm going to take it out. Now here's your pin and its tail. Here is the ejector mechanism, this piece here. If you notice, there's a detent in the back, and that's where inside this, when you pull it out, There's a recess, it has a spring, and it's a separate plunger, this little tiny piece. And that little piece is what locks into the detent in the back of this. And you want to, you know, you want to clean it out because rust does gather in there and that. 